in order to actually uh, start um, getting getting to my book, um, I'm not. I'm going to skip skip um, playing the song um, at the beginning of this video because I um, I underestimated how much I would have to say about this, this just the songs themselves. Um, So um, the next page of my book, after the the bit about me, the author, is about this book, including an important little warning label. Because the uh, the warning label is actually you know quite important in a lot of things. <clears throat> It may, it may well kill you if, um, if you don't pay attention to that. Um, you shouldn't uh, underestimate the seriousness of um, those sorts of things. Um, so then it reads, Gaslit by a madman, the certifiably true ravings of a section philosopher. Is a droller take on subjects of mental health, political issues, Nietzschean, Christian, Jungian, existentialist, and postmodern philosophy. Don't be afraid to question your worldview. Don't be afraid to think you might be a bit mad. Who isn't? Um, so I think that's a, a good little summary and a good way of thinking about it. Um, these issues um, a very condensed um, way of phrasing it. Um, I don't actually go into that much depth in a lot of the those things that I've just alluded to, like the Christian Jungian existentialist postmodern philosophy. Um, I I am very interested in those kind of fields and subjects, and um, um, I think I could go into them at some point, um, perhaps with a little bit more research. Um, and it's something that I'd quite like to do in the future. Um, and I do have quite a good um, kind of um, air view kind of uh, impression and understanding of them um but the book generally is more about my own thoughts and my own analysis of psychiatry um more just you know from within within myself um more, aiming, aiming more for originality um and just kind of referencing the, these these other kind of uh, strands of thought and how a little bit how they fit in with what I'm saying. Um, um, but obviously, you know, in Uh, it would be very difficult for you know a single book to cover all of those you know areas in in in, in great depth. Um, and yeah, the certified be true ravings of a certain philosopher. So um, I think that's a nice uh, phrase as well. That was originally going to be like the subtitle to the, to the main book, but um, thought I'd kind of tone it down a little bit and just um, just put the actual topics in the subtitle. Mm -hmm. Then I've got a quote from Jordan Peterson. Who I've already explained, I you know, consider a, a great voice of reason in the current uh, current society. 
people often get basic psychological questions backwards. Why do people suffer from anxiety? That's not a mystery. How is it that people can ever be calm? That's the mystery. We're breakable and mortal. A million things can go wrong in a million ways. We should be terrified out of our skulls at every second. So that's, you know, a great way of turning the the psychiatric point of view on its head, isn't it? I mean, um, you know, um, anybody who, you know, understands what Jordan Peterson is saying here and takes it to heart, you know, if he did it, if he did it, if he did to himself, it would be very difficult to kind of uphold the, you know, like the idea, the, the kind of concept of paranoia, you know, don't you think? I mean... Um, he, he literally says we should be terrified out of our skulls at every second. You know, this shouldn't. This isn't just like idle rhetoric. Um, yes, it, it is to, to a certain extent. You know, um, a kind of a rhetoric, but um, it's also actually you know, it, it's, a, it's it's simply accurate what he's saying. You know, it's it's not due to a lack of reason or a lack of you know competence that the human the the average human being is. You know, um, obliviously calm, or you know, not not highly highly afraid and worried about you know the future and uh, the nature of society and pot potentially sinister and dark powers. That's not due due to their amazing you know re its, um, sanity and and uh, the quality of their reason. It's something completely different. It's just a kind of everyday herd mindedness, complacency. Um, so, <clears throat> we, sh we shouldn't view people who do, who do actually feel terrified out of their every second as, you know, sick and irrational. We should just, we should sort of see them in a more kind of um, objective and uh, um, impartial light, whereby we actually like recognize that, well, yes, they in fact, this is what they, they're, how they're reacting is just as valid objectively as the way that I'm reacting um, or the way the, most people are reacting. It's not invalid. It's, it poses certain challenges and difficulties, you know, for people and society, just as, you know, everybody, um, so even so-called normal people, they also pose certain challenges and difficulties of their own. You know, certainly it may be more harder to notice um, at first glance, um, at least to many people. Um, but... Um, just because, you know, people, you know, who openly kind of are very afraid of, of, of things and question, you know, society a lot, just because, you know, that creates, you know, makes people uncomfortable and creates certain trouble, you know, for, for people who don't want to, you know, think too hard about things, that doesn't mean that they are sick and that they should be treated, you know, with violence. And tucked away, you know, somewhere, somewhere out of sight. Um, this, this, as I argue in the book, this is extremely pathological and leads to much more problems down the future, down the road. And you know, it's grossly unfair and uh, gross violence towards the individuals it's inflicted on. Um, in fact, um, what 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 we see with people like this is the manifestation of not a you know a neurological problem in their own brains or genetic defect or problem you know exactly peculiar to the individual but it's more of a kind of you know um uh a manifestation of a general social problem it's part of the functioning of the sociobiological organism um whereby <clears throat> i mean you know just to try and you know kind of um Make some suggestions here because this isn't this is just preliminary. But I mean, you know, an individual is basically, you know, they are 
afraid and they're sending distress signals to those around them and maybe they're questioning you know the underpinnings of society and you know whether or not you know things are already you know being done for our best interests well um you know the the rational and healthy response is more is more is not to you know try to suppress this and uh and medicate them and uh and that kind of thing but it's to um it's more it's more a question of um like just like i say the average person it, it is um they don't know that they're safe in a way that the paranoid or pathological person so-called pathological person you know um you know, doesn't know they're safe. You know, as Jordan Peterson is saying here, um, it's not a matter of it's not a matter of rationality or reason or or health. Um, it's in fact it's a combination of excessive doubt and fear uh, on the one hand of the one person, and on the other person it's excessive complacency. Um, so there needs to be a kind of medium, you know, and some kind of conversation occur here whereby people actually start instead of suppressing distress and um, acting with complacency they actually start acting rationally upon these these kind of legitimate doubts and fears about the world and they try to gain greater knowledge and insight so that they can actually know the truth about the true nature of things and verify to some extent, you know, uh, whether or not, you know, um, they are safe and, um, you know, one should kind of trust the government and that kind of thing. Um, and also, you know, so that they can inform themselves so that they can, so they can empower themselves and correct any kind of dangers which they actually are in. You know, both as individuals and also as a society. Um, and it's not just about like nefarious powers, you know, in control. I don't want to, you know, overemphasize that point. It's also about the whole entire direction of society, which, you know, may be just like, you know, kind of like a herd of lemmings, you know, going off a cliff, you know, not because some, some kind of sinister, nefarious person is in control. Who um, you know? Who is actually orchestrating it? But just because you know the whole of society is so is so embedded in pathological and complacent ways of thinking, and um, that they're not dealing with the real existential risks, such as you know the threat of you know dehumanizing technology, um, which is something I can go into, you know, at length, you know, and um, it's been talked about, you know, by philo by real philosophers, you know, for a long time and taken very seriously. I mean, it's not like some kind of paranoid fantasy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the threat of very serious dehumaning, dehumanizing technology, you know, being used against, you know, ourselves, you know, um, But also other things, you know, you know, for instance, you know, I myself, you know, have considered, you know, the immigration issue in, in Europe to be, you know, a, you know, a, you know, an existential kind of issue, you know, for, you know, quite a long time, you know, and, um, and in many ways, you know, that must be seen how it appears. I mean, um, the fact that it's not, you know, acceptable to say that, or it's not considered, you know, politically correct to say that doesn't make any less true. And, uh, you know, I, um, you know, but, um, you know, partly in deference to the, the politically correct way of seeing things, I will say that um, I'm not necessarily saying it's a, you know, a bad, a bad or, you know, um, existentially um, catastrophic, you know, thing, because, you know, things are not always as they appear, but Please don't, please don't deny the common sense um, point of view, or at least you know what is what is 
one side of one very strong clear side of the issue um because that just undermines your case and makes you seem disingenuous like i've already said in these lectures so far i believe in kind of including the other i believe including the other in one's own being um because that's true love and that makes one stronger um but and, and and if you take that logic to the question of you know whole societies and our relation our relation to other parts of the world you can see there's a clear um uh um you know correlation here between what i'm saying in the case of the individual and the case of what i'm saying with you know whole societies or, or europe in relation to the interest in relation to the other world so I am not categorically against you know, openness and inclusion of, of the other, either at a personal level or at a, or at a nationwide uh, continent or continent level. But just as at the individual level, um, a healthy ego, um, a, sense of, oh, a sense of oneself and what one's actual needs are, and uh, boundaries in relation to other individuals is extremely important to self-preservation and success you know and only only allowing those kind of boundaries to be you know um uh you know partly um you know allow some osmosis um in in moderation uh, um as it's as it is as it's healthy and conducive to mutual benefit uh, in just the same way it's very important to have boundaries at a, a, at a na international and a, a continent-wide level uh, we cannot just be completely open if one is completely open as either an individual or as a nation you will be destroyed because life itself is based upon like i say like i say later in the book like the the like the very this this the, down to the, the single cell and down to you know the individual organism or any kind of organism whether it's a plant or an animal is based on actually um eschewing its its environment and keeping up you know a boundary literally you know in, in terms of a cell there's a cellular war right that is what the cellular war is there to keep out the outside and let it in, you know, under very careful conditions. Um, in just the same way, the mind and um, the the personality and a culture um, is is fundamentally dependent upon eschewing its environment, on rejecting its environment, and only carefully. You know, at certain times, um, reversing that general tendency and allowing certain types of inclusion, um, most obviously in, in the form of, you know, um, nutrition. Um, <clears throat> um, so, you know, that is the nature of living organisms, that is the nature of all life, and you can't just reverse the laws of, of nature, um, you know, and think you can, you can get away with it and succeed. Um, um, so I just uh, ask people to please, you know, if there are people on the, more towards the left of the political spectrum who, who, who watch these videos, I ask them to please be rational and not, um, outlaw what are simply the the basic logic um, and common sense um, approach to reality. Um, and if they do, I accuse them of being probably pathological themselves and driven by, you know, as Nietzsche says, you know, um, you know, a, 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 rather than attempt to, you know, make themselves lift themselves up, just to, simply an attempt to destroy. Driven by attempt to destroy others. Um, 
or destroy the strong, you know, in favor of like some temporary gains for the weak. Um, um, So yeah, that kind of that lecture, that rant, just uh, fits in quite nicely with uh, you know Jordan Peterson, right? I you know it's um, it's kind of appropriate um, there. Um, um, <clears throat> but yes, but Jordan Peterson does not seem to you know take take this to its logical conclusion. What the statement he makes here. And really, kind of address the injustices of the psychiatric system himself. Um, he's content to make, you know, excuses for for his own. Um, kind of wary, um, you know, because he's a genuinely wary individual. You, you can tell listening to him. Um, he He's serious-minded and he, he really cares about, about being careful about things. Um, and so we can see, you know, he, this is, this is, this is expressed in this quote because you know, he really is actually terrified by modern society. And, um, you know, a lot of the way the world is going. And, you know, in this quote, you know, he is kind of justifying himself, right, to a certain extent, which is fine. But, um, you know, but he really perhaps should, you know, apply the logic to, you know, others, not just himself. And, you know, apply it to the people who are kind of most scared and most oppressed of all, which is, you know, the, the mental patients who are being terrorized um, by a system which invalidates precisely the kind of fears that he is actually referring to in this, in this quote. But... You know, I'm not being, I, you know, I say, I'm actually being very harsh on him because, you know, one person can't necessarily, you know, can't reform all aspects of society um, or speak necessarily the truth about all aspects of society. You know, it would be enough if he didn't oppose genuine reform in the area. I mean, because, you know, he is actually serving a function in other areas. He's actually shedding, shedding genuine light on things. Which you know, it seems like seems like he's pushing in a healthy direction. Um, so, <clears throat> um, and if one tries to be all things to all people, or you know, or tries to actually, you know, cover all areas, it can detract because, you know, for instance, if he was to speak out against psychiatry, well, he may well, you know, lose the lose any support that he does have. In the media or um, um, it, it, um, in mainstream society, because the psychiatric, the pharmaceutical industry would be so so against him, so that could be you know detrimental to him getting his voice out and um, sh sh shedding light on all the deep psychological s subjects that he does. Um, so you know, I'm just I'm only criticizing to you know shed light on the subject rather than being you know, um, mean spirited and, um, and adopting a, um, uh, a negative attitude towards him per, per se.